here's the file that, that I have prepped, uh, which has all of your ISAT information, uh, which is what we're going to use today, uh, the demographic information, and various other kind of data points that we'll need to do the analysis from neighborhood mappings to you know the different schools in the city. So with this, let's just start by taking the schools and putting them here. And what this does is, I'm gonna get rid of this non-school, but what this does is basically lists all the schools across the top here in the city of Chicago. And these are all traditional public schools, selective enrollments, all the various types of schools. And what I wanna do is I wanna then look at this by the ISATs meets exceeds. So I'm gonna put that in my rows. So ISATs here for all the schools in alphabetical order across the city look like the following. The next step is to really take a look at this in a sorted fashion and get a sense of, okay, how are the schools doing? Well, as you can see, these particular schools have an ISAT meets exceeds of 100%, which means all of the kids in their school are at the meets exceeds level and then it slowly scales its way down. And if you look across the bottom, you can see these are all the different names. And actually, one particular article I read pointed out that CICS Irving Park doesn't show up until here, which uh, I don't believe is 42 on the list, but it is pretty far down on the list. So this is the first charter school. Now this doesn't really give you a really good snapshot of how schools are doing, so let's take a look at the, the various types of schools that are in the district because I think that's gonna give a better perspective. So I'm just gonna color coordinate this. And what you see here is in purple are your selective schools, in brown are your traditional public schools, and in red are your magnet schools, charters in green, alternative and sped alternative. Now in this case, I'm thinking of it from the parent's perspective. So I'm looking at my own kids and, uh, and thinking that they're probably not, well, I'm hoping that they're not going to alternative schools. They're definitely not, they're not going to be in SPED schools. So I'm going to exclude those two particular populations. So now, as you can see, we have all the cities, all the schools in the city, selective enrollment and charter all the way down. And what you can see quickly is that the green being the charters are kind of spread amongst the brown for the most part all the way down. So, you know, the claim that charters are outperforming their neighborhood traditional schools on, on the whole across the city is not really f well founded in this particular example. So let's, but let's be fair and let's think about it. You know, I have two kids and, you know, one of them is probably going to go to a selective enrollment, but I'm not, I'm not so sure about the other guy. So I'm going to pull out the selective enrollments and think about this from a parent's perspective. I, I have limited options on where my kids can go to school. And I'm thinking, I want to send my kids to the place with the best ISAT score. So here are my options. And so I'm going to leave magnets in because there's an argument that can be made that magnets can enroll uh, students from across the city, just like charters can in many cases in the traditional public school. So as you can see, this is the landscape for Chicago. And again, it's a pretty even spread. It's a fairly nice red, green, and brown um, color across the district. Now, I think that the real test comes in when you start to take into account I'm a parent, I live in a specific neighborhood, I have access to specific neighborhoods, so really I'm going to start looking at schools that are near me. And what this does when you put the neighborhood on, it basically categorizes by neighborhood. So here's Albany Park, and here's all the schools in Albany Park. Again, Archer Heights, Auburn, Ashburn, Auburn Gresham, Austin, and so on. What you see now is you have all the schools ranked within these various neighborhoods. And as you scroll across, you'll notice that charter schools are the green, and every time there's a bracket, it's a new neighborhood. So this is a neighborhood, Belmont Cragen's a neighborhood, Bridgeport, Brighton, but for the most part, magnets and charter schools across the district, as I bring up the whole district, tend to skew towards the top of their neighborhoods, which is saying that as long as their neighborhood schools they're performing or outperforming their, their neighborhood counterparts. Now there are, there are a few exceptions where schools are not performing quite as well, uh, but in most cases, it's rare to find a charter at the bottom of the ISAT ranking by neighborhood, which is how a parent is going to look at it. If I live in Englewood, I'm gonna be looking for schools in the Englewood area or the nearby neighborhoods, and that's how I'm gonna make my decision. So if we take that example and we slide down to Englewood, here are my options in Englewood. 
and you can see there's some there's some pretty good schools in Englewood, traditional public schools. There's a couple of good charters, and there's some decent magnets, and then there's a you know a pretty severe strip drop off. But that is how this how the parent in the city of Chicago probably be looking at this. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is if you take into account the free and reduced lunch status of the students, because I think this helps differentiate some more, and it also helps take into account this concept of, uh, or this notion that charters are recruiting certain types of populations. Basically, I'm going to set this up so you can see the, this superimposed over the district schools. Let me change the color here so it's easier to see. And this is gonna allow you to see the free and reduced lunch for every single one of these, these schools as we scroll across. Sorry, let me fix this mark type. And you have it here. So as you can see, here's the free and reduced lunch for this school. In this case, free and reduced lunch is actually in the 90s, 0.958. So as you go across, you can start to get a sense of how well these schools are performing on a free and reduced lunch standard. And you get a sense that you know some, some of these schools that are performing well, whether they're magnet schools or traditional public schools, may not have the same population of kids uh, in terms of the neighborhood. Now, a step further is you can actually take the neighborhood look at the neighborhood's you know, typical uh, rate of free and reduced lunch and get a sense of you know, where the kids are coming from. But in this case, I look at some place like Beverly as an example, and really, you have very different schools here uh, in terms of their performance. They, these schools at the top are performing at a much higher clip, but in some ways, you look at Barnard versus Sutherland, and you have extremely different populations that are going that are attending this particular school. So, in a nutshell, I think that you get a sense of what the district looks like, and you also get a sense that most of these charter schools, in fact, if you do an analysis across the district, charter schools are serving populations of 50% or higher free and reduced lunch students uh, because they tend to be in neighborhoods that have those populations. And in most cases, charter schools are performing or outperforming their traditional neighborhood counterparts on a neighborhood-by-neighborhood -neighborhood basis.